The Thrawn trilogy, by many, is considered to be some of the best work of Star Wars fiction out there in the old expanded universe, also known as Star Wars Legends, also known as the George Lucas canon, as I like to call it. Um, it's been considered by many by Timothy Zahn to be his best work. He's considered very much a big legend in the Star Wars community, since his work hands down was considered the best. And now with Thrawn returning in the new Disney canon, which I'll talk about in another video, and with his book coming out in 2017 written by Timothy Zahn again, um, I wanted to give some thoughts on the Thrawn trilogy, which I've gathered from the Reader's Companion book that I recently bought. <laughs> it's been out for four years now, and I just now got it. Sad. <laughs> um, like, it, like, the book introduces two characters that many fans come to know and love. Uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn, who is a sophisticated Grand Admiral Chiss, which is unexpected because it's an alien and the Empire was discriminatory to him aliens, and like, no, he does his job great. Let's get him as our Grand Admiral. And then we got the inf the famous Mar J. Skywalker, who would later be Luke's love interest, obviously. Um, and it would get married, so she was just Mara Jade at the time. And she is tasked by Emperor Palpatine right before he gets killed in Return of the Jedi to kill Luke Skywalker. And they do this big storyline where there's this Trace clone Jedi named Joris Bodarth, I think. I, I, can't, I can't pronounce it. I'm pretty sure I got it wrong. Um... And then there's this clone of Luke Skywalker called Luke Skywalker with an extra U. And I'm thinking, you could have came up with something better. Like, okay, I get what he's there for. He's there to make Marge stop, remove all remaining connections to Palpatine by killing this clone of Luke since he is an embodiment of Luke. Except he's just a mindless killing machine programmed by Jewish Boat Arth and, or whatever his last name was. And Grand Admiral Thrawn, since Grand Admiral Thrawn uses cloning technology from the Clone Wars era, and then there was a notice of contradictory until that was corrected in later novels and later comics and books, um, that the Clone Wars was a war between unstable clones and the Republic, which wasn't the case. It turns out it would be because there were unstable clones events in the Clone Wars era, or the Clone Wars saga, and... And I think they also tied it with the whole chip micro chip thing in their heads that would be shown in Season 6, which would explain a lot of things, saying that there are clones that were unstable and some of the chips got malfunctioned. You can make that up. Though, I'm not 100% certain, but like this is when they were retconning the Clone Wars saga to keep the expanding universe by, by fracturing it to from years to months and all this confusion was going on with the Clone Wars series by Dave Filoni and Tchaikovsky, um, no, not Tchaikovsky, uh, the guy who made Samurai Jack, I'll just go with that. And Grand Admiral Thrawn was a vindictive character. He could be intimidating and he had these very blood red eyes that had no pupils and I was like, okay, that's actually kind of intimidating. Like. Like, if he stared at you with those evil eyes of the devil, pretty much, you would squirm, most likely. But Mara J got more famous because, well, this well this book got more famous because it was considered by many to be the true sequel trilogy that nobody ever got. This was going to be their sequel trilogy, and it takes place five years after Return of the Jedi. And it would, it would like show what was going on at the time like Luke, like Han and Leia are married at this time and they're expecting kids named Jason and Jaina Solo and we all know how that turned out and then a year later they'll be expecting Anakin and we all know how he turned out Eesh. only one survives I'll just go with that if you've never read the expanded universe <laughs> but I won't say who so Anyways, these novels have become very famous. It's almost unbelievable how famous they are. Like, like they re-released the era, era of the Empire. The dark, the um. Let's see if I got this correct. Um, I could be wrong here, but it was called um, 
Dark Force Rising and The Last Command, and then they re-released Air of the Empire in the 20th Anniversary Edition, and Timothy Zahn said that if it does well, he would re-release the other two in 20th Anniversary Editions, but that never materialized. And now I heard rumors from StarWarsUnderground.net, or .com, um, could be wrong on this, this is just a rumor from what I gathered, that they will be re-releasing the, the, the Thrawn Trilogy, still under the Legends banner, I think, but with new covers, and while that, eh, that wouldn't really say much, like, people would be hoping, like, oh, is this going to be a sign of things to come for the Legends canon to still continue as its own separate entity? Well, I'm certainly hoping so, but I'll get to Disney's invalidation of the Expanding Universe in a future video. But, uh, I just wanted to get my thoughts on the Thrawn Trilogy. These were amazing books by many and loved by so many, and I can understand why. And this was considered the sequel trilogy before the actual sequel trilogy. And it also introduced us to Coruscant, the Republic capital, which would be incorporated into the prequel saga and in the special editions on the, uh, of Return of the Jedi. So that would be the beginning of George Lucas incorporating as much Expanded Universe material as he can into the movies, in the prequels, and special editions in order to tie everything together and also throw an Easter egg saying, oh, I recognize that. Oh my god, it's that! Like Quinn LaVos in Episode 1. But anyways, those are my thoughts on the Thrawn trilogy. This was Neo Reality Entertainment. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and donate. Stay tuned for more.